Boom. Should collegiate student athletes be classified as employees? Here is your answer. On September 24th, 1955, Ray Dennison, an army vet and father of three, was playing right guard for Fort Lewis A&M when he took a knee to the helmet, slipped into a coma, and died. The school argued that because Ray was a student athlete, he was not entitled to death benefits to be paid out to his widow and children. Ever since, the term student athletes has been used to argue that college athletes, despite raking in billions of dollars for the NCAA and their school, should not be entitled to compensation. The fact that an enormously outsized fraction of these student athletes are black, and that their unpaid labor goes towards building grand stadiums, gaining prestige for their universities, and paying million dollar salaries to coaches and administrators adds a true neo-plantation feel to the situation. In addition, the NCAA seems to violate two major sets of laws through its policy. One, antitrust laws, and two, anti-labor laws. However, on the other side, upending the amateur nature of college sports would negatively impact schools who would have to pay thousands of dollars of wages to each student each season, thus increasing tuition or cutting out non-profitable sports like women's sports or Olympic sports. It would lead to an arms race between schools, as only the rich could afford the best athletes, further increasing the divide between the classes in America as top D1 schools and Ivy Leagues pay millions to the best athletes and gain even more prestige, donations, and power for themselves. And for the students themselves, student athletes could lose room and board benefits, see educational results plummet, and be suddenly burdened with the same management issues that professional athletes experience today. Either way, the tides are changing. The Supreme Court ruled in 2021 that NCAA rules can't prohibit students from being paid, thus opening the door for them to profit off of NIL rights for video games, NFTs, and other uses of their name, image, and likeness. If you want to learn more, click on the link in the description for the full one-hour topic lecture backed by tons of science and expert opinion.